Hey everyone, um, I was just on this uh, Discord chat and someone said something that was uh, pretty intriguing to me. They said, um, they were talking about uh, programming a tic-tac-toe game. They, they said two things actually, they were talking about programming a tic-tac-toe game and also a Connect 4 game in about 30 minutes. And I was thinking, um, that seems pretty difficult, I don't think I could program connect four in 30 minutes but i think i might be able to just maybe do tic-tac-toe in 30 minutes it's, it seems it's like it's at the edge it's an, i'm uncertain whether or not i could do it in 30 minutes or not so i, I thought i'd give it a shot just to just to satisfy my curiosity um so i got your my id set up I just did a uh, hello world, which you see ran here, just to make sure that you know everything's my compiler and my IDD is all set up correctly. Because I'm, this is IntelliJ, I'm still learning IntelliJ. I'm, I'm an Eclipse main, but I'm trying to learn IntelliJ, so to speak. Um, so tic tac toe in the console. I haven't talked too deeply about it. I mean, like obviously, as soon as they said tic tac toe in the console, some ideas pop into my head, like you know, two D arrays and all that. But um, but I try not to think too much on the design. I'm going to try to figure it all out in, in 30 minutes. So here, here's my 30 minute timer. Let's start that. And uh, all right. So if we're going to do tic-tac-toe on the console, let me see here. I think the first thing I need to do is I need to figure out how to do input. And I actually don't know how to get um, user input in Kotlin. Is there like a read line function, system in read line? Do I even have system? I do have system. Okay. I have read but not read line. So let me in another window. Kotlin read line. How do I read? Oh, is there a function called read line? There is. Read the line or null if the input is redirected to the end of stream. Okay, so let's try that. Let's just check that this works. Actually, let me. So I'll print this as a prompt and then you said. Use input. So let's run this. Hi. You said hi. Okay, that does work. Cool. So we know how to read read from the user input now. Okay, so tic tac toe. Um, in terms of UI, what am I thinking? I'm thinking I'm going to print a, a number grid. Yeah. So let's create. Okay. Let me think. I'm going to want, okay, let me think here. Let's do an enum of x, o, and empty. Maybe we'll make empty first. I don't know if it matters. Um, call it cell for now. So we're going to create an array of cell? No, an array of array of cell, I guess. How the heck do you create? Is there an array literal in Kotlin? Did I forget to say Kotlin? Yeah, I want Kotlin. Array of, cool. So let's just start with this empty array. Um, this is a little bit sloppy. I'm gonna say, I'm gonna have a turn variable, which is also gonna be of this type, um, it's a little bit sloppy because you you know empty is not a valid um, value for a turn, but whatever. Maybe we'll clean it up later if we have time. So I have my starting grid. I have. Um, let me think about this because what I'm thinking now is that the UI. Since I I want to print something like like this in the UI and then have the person type in like one if they want to put their mark here or four if they want to put their mark here or whatever, right? Um, so I guess I'll, I'll have a function that prints out the state of the grid. And I guess right now I'm going for a um, procedural solution. We can, if we have time, we can look into making a more object-oriented solution, but I don't know if we're gonna go to down that route. So given your grid, what I would do is for, let's see. Actually, I can probably just 
upgrade that. Is there for each? Can I not iterate over arrays? For each I can, okay. So I got a bunch of rows. And then each row for each cell. I'm gonna print um what am I gonna print? I'm gonna do a when on the cell value. So it's not valid. Let me speak exactly. Yeah, so when it's empty, I'm gonna do something. I don't know what yet. I'm gonna figure this out in a bit. Yeah, I do want cell that empty. Drys cell that x, I'm gonna print x. And if it's an O, I'm gonna print O. Let me start at zero. So here I'm going to increment the cell index. I do this. Um, after each row, I'm going to do a print line. I keep going semicolons because at, <laughs> at work I do Java, so I'm so like I have this instinct to do semicolons. I, I mo only do Kotlin in my uh, spare time for home projects. Okay, so let's let's check if this works. So if I print out this grid. I'm hoping to see a grid of numbers like one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Yes, I do. Okay. So maybe up here I'm gonna say here's the current grid state. And then I'm gonna have a prompt for move. Um, I'm gonna pass in the grid because I wanna validate that the move is valid here. Did I copy grid? I think I did. Um, and I guess I'll return a new grid, like what the state is after that move happens. It seems like a reasonable thing to do. Um, Not sure it's like one to nine, something like that. Okay, so then I do my equals read line. So now they say they want to do one of these. I'm gonna to try to hmm, if it's so the documentation said that this is it's a string question mark, meaning it's a nullable string, and it's null. If it's null, it means that the um it means that we reach the end of the file if, if the file was redirected. How are we doing for time, by the way? I'm, am I going to scare myself? I'm going to scare myself a little bit. Yeah, 22 minutes left. Okay. So I'm thinking if if we're at the end of the line, basically that means there's, there's not going to be any more input. So like the user basically quit the game. So maybe I'll also return null here to signal that uh, that I want to quit the game. So if I give an array input, that means that's the next st step. Otherwise, we're quitting the game for whatever reason. OK, so now, otherwise, we have our input. Um, I guess we'll try to parse it. Uh, so how do I do it? Is there a parse? Let's go with this one. I can't. I think this throws an exception, right? It throws like number format exception or something like that. If if it's not a valid int, we'll worry about that later. We'll come back to that. But for now, let's let's assume um, that this is this is uh, correctly like the. It's a correct input. We let's just not worry about error handling for now. Um, well, now I have to figure out. So I need something that, like, given given a cell ID, I, mean, I need rows and column coordinates, something like that. 
Is there a pair type in color? Yeah, there is. Okay, so let me think about this. I could just do the, the lazy way, then I can like... I can worry about error correcting it later. The lazy way being just list out all the possibilities. Is that not how I do a pair? Oh, that's how I do a pair. Okay. It's actually probably zero, zero. Uh, am I doing, I'm doing rows and then columns, right? So same row, next column. And then four, five, six. Oops, four, five, six. Seven, eight, nine. So I'm I'm using the um I'm using the principle of uh, get something working and then you can optimize or clean it up later. Column we'll call this guy on it. Um, oops, let's do a curly brace. I'll just recursively do loop here. Can I do what's it called? Telephone? Tell rack, that's what it's called. Okay, so let's see. Otherwise, I do have a rolling coordinate. Now I can check if that cell is empty. Can I mutate the array? Are arrays mutable in Kotlin? They probably are. So if this, so I need to pass in whose turn it is. Um, I'm not too happy about mutating this, but I guess we'll worry about that later also. Um, otherwise, I'm going to print. I'm not too happy about this repetition of, of this thing again, but again, we'll worry about that. We'll come back to that. All right, so now let's see if this works. So I show the grid, then I'm going to prompt. Return should be lifted out. Sure, lift out that return. Otherwise, these okay. So I show the grid. Then I'm going to prompt for move. Let's go get move. Turn the grid. Oh man. I'm I'm disliking my solution more and more, but 
and you're just gonna go for it for now. So, um, basically, I'm asserting that this is not null at this point. You know what? No, I don't. I don't like where this ended up. I'm not gonna do this. So I can call this maybe grid. If maybe grid is null. I'm gonna say I'm ending the game. And yeah, maybe I'll let the player quit early by saying, let's see. Or if I get the empty string. Is empty? Is blank? That also returns now, which quits the game. Okay, so. And that's the end of this. Otherwise, I do have a grid. So here, grid is not null. So now I'm going to say um, ah, to use the Java, sorry. If it's O, then it's now X. And it's x, it's now o, otherwise something bad happened. So we definitely got a turn, like we definitely got the value, so we flipped the turn and then we just uh, repeat, I guess. All right, let's see if this works. Current grid state is x turns, which, so I want to go in root 5. There he is in 5. Now it's O's turn, which cell do you want to go to? So I want to go to 1. Now it's x turn, okay. Which cell do you want to go to? I want to go to 8. Yeah, so this part looks like it's worked. So the part we don't, we're missing now is detecting when victory happened. Well, actually, let me t test. What if I say 5 here? It should say there's already an x. It's still O's turn, which cell do you want to mark? Yeah, that looks good. So four. Okay, cool. So now I need to detect victory. Um, so I can have a function called check winner or something like that. And you give it a grid. I get this. I need to do a type alias for, for this type because I'm using it so often. But here's my grid. Um, and then I'm going to return, I guess, who won either. So this is a nice type now. So either X or O or empty won, right? Like an empty meaning if no, neither person won. How am I going to do this? Um, check horizontals. Check verticals. Check diagonals. Right? Um, so for no grid dot uh, how do I do it <laughs> for each actually no if I just say no I do want to do for each okay for each for each row I want to check if all the all the values are either X or O. So can I get a stream out of this? Or a sequence? Is that what they call it in, in Kotlin? So if all of them are cell.o, Return cell that one, or if all of them are cell that x. Wait, what's this value of? I thought it said O. Oh, did it auto complete to cell? Otherwise, x one. So I think that does horizontal for verticals. I'm gonna do how am I gonna do this? I guess I'll just do a traditional loop. 
for var colon equals zero colon then three call plus plus. Can I even do a traditional <laughs> for loop in uh, in Kotlin, or is that not? Oh, for call in. Is that how I do it? I have no idea how to do a for loop. Is this a sequence itself? If so, I can map this to grid. Um, For each of these lists, I'm just gonna make sure I don't have a bug here by asserting that it dot length dot size is three, and I don't know if ass assertions are enabled, so I'm gonna actually do it as a as a non-assertion. Like I want to make sure it runs because I don't know if I have enabled assertions in my JVM args here. Um, I basically want to do something like this, right? Check that that all the values are the same. So let's just do X. And what I'm getting here is, I feel like. I want to um, create a function that checks if three values are the same. Because this is. statement if I do it like this. Right, so the idea is if all the three values are the same, whether it's X, O, or empty, then return that value. If, if any of them differ, just say it's empty, meaning none of them are the same. I don't know if I want to start changing this here. But we'll use it for this one, for the two diagonals. Um, for that, I don't name after the forward slash. I hope I, I might be mixed up for it. And, and I call you know, I'm gonna call it a different name just to make it clear. I'm gonna call this uh, one where's my ASCII art of the grid, or it's down here. It's the 159 diagonal, and then I also have the uh. One for the uh, three five seven diagonal. Okay, so for the five one for the one five nine diagonal equals check winner with no not check winner, sorry, check all same. 
if grid zero zero actually I can probably use the um cell ID no I can't it's too complicated um one one and then grid two two right and if this is not the empty cell and return it otherwise check all same for a cell uh, let's see row zero two oops I call it grid instead of or I call it cell instead of grid man I'm getting nervous because I have no idea how I'm doing on time right now <laughs> let's see one of the two two is zero So here we're gonna say if it's this guy, return this, otherwise finally we didn't find a winner. So we'll just say it's empty, meaning there's no winner. Okay. So now check winner on the grid. I'm gonna do a win again. Win. Case. Or I keep doing case. Actually, you know what? I'm gonna do it. It's empty. Do nothing else. Maybe winner one and then i'll quit okay so in theory this fully implements it so let's test that x is turn x goes five. <laughs> oh wow rip check winner off by one error aka fence post error so this is i thought that was non-inclusive ending but it is inclusive i guess Five. Okay, it's O's turn. One. Okay, X turns. Two. O's turn. Let's go four. X turns. Eight. X one. So vertical works. Um. Oh, you know what? I don't have I don't have a tie detector. But okay, let's let's make sure horizontal works. X wants five. Uh, o wants one. X wants four. O wants two. X wants eight. O wants three. O one, yep. Okay, and, and make sure diagonal works. X wants five. Oops, don't have focus on the thing. O wants two. X wants one. O wants four. X wants nine. X one. Okay, nice. So I'm thinking about this now. <laughs> I'm thinking, do I want to make this data type like this, like cell, nullable cell, and then like I use null to mean tie or something like that? Seems like a pain. Maybe maybe I should do an explicit type for this, just because it's like I'm overloading the type to that first type up there to do a lot of different things. Who is the winner? The winner is either X O Knight. There, or oh, it's a tie.
Otherwise, right now I'm gonna say return winner dot neither, neither. But I want one more check, which is to say, is there any empty cell left? Is there any row such that is there any cell such that cell is cell dot empty? If there is an empty cell, then neither of them are winners. Otherwise, return you're not tie. It's a tie. Okay, so where's my thing down here? Maybe winner. Is if it's um, winner dot neither do nothing. If it's winner dot tie. Wow, just ran out of time. Otherwise, it's a tie. Okay, the moment of truth. So does this fully implement tic-tac-toe? I, I think it does. There might be some bugs. Um, so let's let's tech test the same cases again. We'll do vertical. So x wants 5, o wants 1, x wants 2, o wants 4, x wants 8, x1. Yep. Um, we'll do horizontal with O winning. X wants five, O wants one, X wants four, O wants two, X wants eight, O wants three, O one. Okay. Make sure diagonal still works. X wants five, O wants two, X wants one, O wants four, X wants nine, X one. Okay, and now let's test for a tie. X wants five, O wants one, X wants two, O wants eight. Okay, X wants four. O wants six. What does X want now? X wants nine. O wants three. X wants seven. It's a tie. Well, there you have it. it I just, I just barely finished tic tac toe in half an hour. Um, it was tough. So, I guess I was. Um, well calibrated when I said it was right at the edge of my capability to do tic-tac-toe in 30 minutes. Um, it's a crappy, <laughs> crappy code base. I got to say, like, there's a lot of like, you, you know, there, there's, there was, did I use nullables in ways I didn't like? Yeah, I mean, like this, you know, this, this is ugly. <laughs> the, the whole thing is ugly, but it works. Um, in depending on what the um, what your goals are for this project. Sometimes you need to do ugly stuff just to get stuff shipped, right? Like the idea is um, if you want to beat your competitors to market, you know, you might need just get something out and then we can refactor it and clean it up later. That's sort of how I was taking this because I was thinking, okay, 30 minutes, what can I do? Um, uh, if I had infinite time or maybe even an hour, if I had an hour to write tic-tac-toe, I probably would have gone for, uh, I would have cared more about making sure the design is clean, making sure it's maintainable. Um, there's a lot of, I think it's, there's some assumptions that are spread across um, the code base, which is usually I don't like, right? Because it means like if, if I make a change here, I have to also know to make a change somewhere else because the assumption is spread over as opposed to localizing the assumption in one place so that if I make a change here, I like, since that's the only place the assumption happens, I don't have to change anything else. So an example of that is, I'm assuming the grid is a three by three grid, right? Like what if we want to do a four by four variant of tic-tac-toe? Well, I would have to change this, but then I would also have to change like this and and this and probably the diagonals, you know, like, but um, yeah, a very interesting exercise. Um, I'm, <laughs> I'm, I'm glad I did it. I, I learned a lot about um, about myself and also about uh, it, it was a good practice to try to you know not worry too much about code quality and, and just make 
just get something out that's working. Uh, that's not something I do a lot at work, actually. I usually, we're usually a lot more quality focused, but you know, every now and then sometimes, like if there's an emergency, like some sort of uh, customer issue and we need to get a fix out into prod, like immediately to unblock them. Sometimes we do a bit of this like quick hack just to get something working and then we come back and fix it later. So I uh, hope, hope you found the video interesting as well. Uh, I don't know, if, should I post a code? I don't know that anyone will care. We'll see. Um, well, thanks for watching and I'll catch you guys next time.